Hello, scholars. My name is Rhonda Kitchens. I am your Big Bend Community College librarian, and this is the research process. Number one, research is not linear. That's right. Your process of developing or selecting a topic, brainstorming keywords, choosing resources, reviewing, reflecting, reworking, and evaluating your sources can happen in a zigzag, a spiral, a spinning, spinning top is what it looks like. But sometimes it goes in reverse. Yes, think about that. So, first of all, I want you to know if you find yourself going over research a little bit backwards and forwards in a bit of a turn, you know what? It sounds like you're doing it right. Research is not one and done. Well, certainly selecting a topic is seems like a one activity. Sometimes I feel like it could be helped by doing research first and definitely is improved when you do research through it. So, Select a topic. You're going to have to narrow down that topic. You might think you want to write about COVID-19 and sports, but that is huge. It'll take all of your lifetime. COVID-19 and high school sports, smaller. You can handle it. You moved it down using a age. That's really a good way to go, a certain specific group. Now, if you want to look narrow it down further, COVID-19, high school students who are trying to get into professional sports, has it ruined their aspirations that is smaller and if you additionally go to the next level and you identify sport say football tennis whatever may be appropriate you have successfully gone through this piece pretty rapidly and okay and guess what at any point during the research you may find out you need to redo it rethink it and that makes you successful at research just want to make sure you know, research, again, is not one and done. So in this topic, I'm talking about COVID-19 as running sports is far too big, but you can narrow it down. And one of the ways you can do that is using research. I like using our general databases like ProQuest or Academic Search Premier. Just put in some of your basic things, COVID-19, sports, high school, uh, effects, things like that. And just go through the search results and sort of read through them. I'd say read through a good 25 to see different ways that people have approached the topic. And you may find a better topic, a better way of looking at it. And you know what you're definitely going to find? A whole bunch of keywords. And you need to write those down as you go along. Because yes, I, a librarian, absolutely believe in brainstorming keywords is the absolute whole driver of successful research which is definitely never ever one and done. It helps you. First of all, your title, your topic was going to help you out a great deal. You're going to pull the words high school sports, amateur athletics, high risk sports, coronavirus, pandemic, specific report, uh, specific sports like football, tennis, wrestling, high contact, high risk sports. As you go through the research process, keep adding to these. In addition, there are search strategies we can put on top of these words that make them even better than they may first appear. So writing down these words, take them from your topic, take them from your research, and you'll have quite the bountiful tools to take into your work. The research process really helps to also choose your resources, not just fall into them. Imagine. So the first thing you need to make sure you do is read your assignment and your rubric. Your professor is going to ask for specific things. Sometimes they will want five resources. They will want you not to use Wikipedia, not to use this, that, or the other things. So make sure you take those out of your resources. Now, they say choose the resources. Now, some of these are going to be stronger with scholarly articles than others. Some are going to specifically look for newspapers so I actually have primary and secondary sources pulled out separately for you to find so you can always ask a librarian but when you're using something like academic search complete and proquest or even galen context databases you can pull those pieces out so easily so those are like three of the best ways to go in choosing your resources that package covers everything from astronomy to zoology so you're good. And when you're thinking, oh, well, I Google and I Google well. Well, I want you to Google better. All right. Think about this. Now, when you're using your Google, it's already your Google knows who you are. They uh, kind of have seen your other searches. They've identified who you are and what you look like. So when you get a set of searches for a topic, 
it's not going to look like the searches I'm going to get for that topic. You're sort of locked down in a bubble unless you go into a private searching or uh, some sort of search like that. Another way to break out in using the Google goodness, which you already believe in, use Google Advanced or Google Scholar. You actually have to look up Google Advanced. It's kind of hard to find sometimes, but it gives you a whole way of breaking down your search, which is well, really great search strategy. You'll When you see it, you're going to go, yes, I recognize what you're saying clearly. And it's going to kind of strip out the ads and some of the other things you would normally get because it's looking at the specific things you're requiring it to find. Google Scholar. You may think it's useless and it doesn't have full text, but if you use the link the library provides you, I have set it up so it finds full text. So it searches on top of our databases and also finds things out there. They're like PDFs and other secret or hidden dark web, Google Scholar, well, scholarly types of places. And it's awesome and it works really well. Also, you can use it to find other research because if that article is good, you can see who cited it and find those articles as well. Do you feel that? It's really, really nice. That's the way to Google. And again, you know, I like uh, the academic search complete ProQuest in Gale and Context as a part of a precursor into your research. And Eventually, or now, you can use specific subject-based resources. This is really important when you're going into medicine and things like that. These very general pieces are not going to be the fine tools you need. But as we have over 100 databases, we have the very general pieces and fine ones. And you can use the subject lists of databases A to Z to find the subjects. Now, this is a very important part of the process and is ongoing. Does your topic meet the requirements of the assignment? Make sure, even during working on it, that it still does. Look at, uh, does it need five resources? Does it need two scholarly articles? Are you supposed to be using newspaper articles? Do you have to have secondary sources? Whatever. Make sure that you're in the zone. Um, how much does your topic reflect your research and vice versa? Do they still marry up? You may have to work on your topic and change and revise it, rework it, and that's fine. A level of success is actually changing your topic through your research because that means you're working with the research you find and fine tuning your topic. That is fine. If you do that or have to do that, don't feel pain, feel joy. Do you have to research, do you have research that supports and challenges your topic? Like, are you fact finding or are you supporting your personal opinion? latter part's kind of questionable. That is where bias is born. You should be open to the opportunity to find out other information is out there and that too may change your process. You may have totally believed your topic to be so and now you may understand it not to be actually that at all. This is not a failure in research. This is a glorious turning point where you're going to do much better with your resource once you find and tap in to the uh, really great grand information that's out there once you understand there's a plethora of things available to you. Now, you're going to want to evaluate these sources. And these are three of the main ways out there. CRAP, uh, www, who, what, when, why, and SIFT. Now, CRAP is sometimes considered older, but it really does work a lot of times when you're working with information that you don't clearly understand, like scholarly articles, currency, relevancy, authority, accuracy, and purpose. You really want to make it up to date. Your COVID research should only start from 220. 2020. But your pandemic research could start from many centuries back. Relevancy, you want to make sure it actually fits what you're working on and not just the title. You actually have to read it all in full text. If it's not available in full text, move to the next item. Authority, who wrote it, why, accuracy, uh, does this person have a great reputation? Does this group have a great reputation? Does this group have a bias? You can Google these things quite easily. And the purpose, do they want to sway you, entertain you, or inform you? SIFT has a very, really good part about that because they say as soon as you feel emotion, that's when you should stop because that's when the purpose of this particular piece may be to um, emotionally overload you or guide you to a certain space by kind of getting you worked up on a certain way that may not be substantiated by real evidence once you look at it. So they say, look at purpose. Critical thinking says, why did they write this? SIF says, stop, calm down, step back. 
which is kind of cute, by the way. Um, again, this is basic critical thinking. Who wrote it? What were they doing? When, where? All those little pieces kind of look at it like, what is this piece doing? Is it too old? Is it current enough? Are these people, do these people have an authority? Do they have bias? What's going on? Sift to me is more like a true crime thing. And it's, it's one of the newer ways of looking at information, the way that, uh, the, our information um, needs have changed and what we have available. Stop is really important. Wow, this is what, this really is going to work for my project is a good stop. Like, let's really read it. Read past the uh, first paragraph and definitely read past the headline. Investigate the source. What's their bias? Are they well known? Are they part of a scandal? Find better coverage. What? That's right. There's a lot of people who write about the same topic. Find the best possible group. If it's written on a blog, maybe the blog may mention where they got the idea. If you're reading in a magazine like Time, you're like, oh, this is nice, but I want something stronger. They may have mentioned the person they talked to or the, the uh, particular thing they read to get to where they are. Find the better coverage. Move your way up. And it's okay to use like a poor piece of information that you find interesting and trade it up for something better. Now, Trace claims quotes media back to the original context. If they say they use Pew Research Center, go to Pew Research Center. If they say they are using something from um, business statistics developed by the government, go to that source. Whatever they say, go back and look at the piece. Now, certainly SIFT is more time-consuming, but it's going to save you from some embarrassment. You have no way of knowing that your article may have been part of a scandal unless you search the title of that article. You will have no way of knowing if the person who wrote a particular piece was known for misrepresenting information or had a particular thing that they always said that was not true and was, you know, like a conspiracy theory type human being. Unless you search for that person, you will not know. So SIFT is very, very illuminating. And always use one of these things. Use all three. Use the parts that make sense to you. But make sure you really look at your information so that it's doing the work that you want it to do. And finally, I'm going to do a little video where I work these ideas into a search so that you see how they work together, how you can use different I these ideas uh, to work together and understand that the research is an ongoing process. It's a continuing conversation with sources. It's a continuing conversation with your topic. It's a continuing conversation with your readers. Respect them all. I'll see you in the next video.